Assalamu alaikum. As the Holy Quran tells us, the Holy Quran teaches that, the Holy Quran tells us, and the Holy Quran also says, which passages of scripture should guide our public policy? Should we go with uh, Leviticus, which uh, suggests slavery is okay? Or we could go uh, with uh, Deuteronomy, which suggests stoning your child if he strays from the faith? Or should we just stick to the Sermon on the Mount? A passage that is so radical that it's doubtful that our own Defense Department would survive its application. And Ed A. Shema Mubarak. You will see a time in which we as a nation finally recognize relationships between two men or two women as just as real and admirable as relationships between a man and a woman. That's why I support ensuring that committed gay couples have the same rights and responsibilities afforded to any married couple in this country. I believe strongly in stopping laws designed to take rights away and passing laws that extend equal rights to gay couples. Yo, you know, he's, he's got a God complex because he said if they wrote the Bible again, he would be in it. Duh, yeah, I would be in it. I feel like I'm one of the more important people, you know, in pop culture right now. One of the only people with an opinion. The Bible had, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 characters in it. You don't think I would be one of the characters of today's modern Bible? And people have their own forms of Bibles now, you know. It's a new day and age. People have their own thinking. People have their own things that they're into. People have their own religion. Hip-hop is a religion to a certain extent, and the rappers are the preachers. And you the music is the, is the scriptures, you know, it's just like church because you go to a concert, you, 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 you raise your hands in the air, you get dressed up, you sing songs, and you definitely pay some money. It's just like...
didn't do nothing. We're just serial killers. Sure, we got a little problem with necrophilia. I admit it, but you came to us first, right? Just keep this in mind. They're playing our CDs when they're not home. They're playing my tapes in your own car. <laughs> in the tape. And I'm influencing your children. I'm glad you're influenced by us. Do you need drugs? Go home and smoke something. I'm influencing your children. Listen, if you're ever going to commit a crime, you should do it now because you're still a minor. And I'm influencing your children. And I'm influencing your children. And I'm influencing your children. Gacy used an array of clown costumes to entertain children and the community. What was interesting about Gacy's clown makeup was that he departed radically from the traditional rounded eyes and rounded noses typically used by clowns. Gacy liked to sport a more satanic, evil look in his clown makeup, which actually was a subtle revelation of the sinister aspect of his heart. Gacy used some of his clown routines to become a socialite and to meet prospective victims. Gacy would take many of his prospective victims home and teach them various tricks, but it wasn't long before they found out that Gacy's funhouse was really a house of horrors. Gacy was diabolical, sadistic, and satanic. It's not saved. One of the strangest stories I've ever read was the story of Archibald Boyle. Archibald Boyle was an atheist. Not only was he an atheist, he was the like vice president of a club that they had way like back in the early 1800s called the Hell Club. And the Hell Club was a bunch of people that just got together and they had these annual meetings and they had contests of who could be the most blasphemous. And they just had debauchery and all kinds of sin. And they're... They'd have somebody stand up, and he was a star of the show. He could tell funny stories. He had a brilliant mind. He could just have wit, and he could just tell, and he had them all laughing about how there is no God, and, how, and they'd done that every, every year. And he was a ladies' man. He was all cool, and he was a wicked, wicked, wicked man. One night after their meeting, he was on his way home, and he rode his horse home that night through the darkness. And he went home and went to bed and went to sleep and he had a dream. He said he dreamed that night that he was riding his horse through the woods home. And he was dashing through the woods and he said he came around a being like that and he said something come out of the darkness and grabbed him and seized him and held on to him like a being, an entity. And he said, Who are you? Leave me alone. And it said, I've come to take you with me. He's dreaming this. And he got scared and he hit his horse like that and went through the woods. And that thing was hanging on him like a demon. And he run through the woods and run through the woods and run, and it was hanging on him. And he said, get away from me. Get off me. He said, I'll not leave you. I'm taking you with me. I've come to take you with me. And finally he went around the curve and lost control of his horse. And his horse fell off a bank. And he was falling, falling, falling. And he said he kept falling and kept falling and kept falling. And that thing had his arms around him. And he said, I'm taking you with me. He said, where are you taking me? He said, to hell. He said he got down there and these big old gates opened. And when these gates opened, that thing had his arms around his neck. And he said, welcome to hell, Mr. Boyle. And he said he looked in there. And looked around and he saw faces. And he looked around and he said, There was Mrs. D, a girl he used to party with back on earth. And there were some people that he knew that had died. And he grinned and he said, Oh, this is a devilish, pleasant little place. This is hell. This is wonderful. There's Mrs. D. About that time, he said, Her chest opened up and there were snakes. All in her body, and she screamed, There is no rest in hell! And he jumped back and screamed. He said, Next thing you know, these other things just turned into demonic faces. And he could hear, like the heaven, hordes of people screaming, There is no rest! There is no rest in hell! And he said, Get me out of here. Get me out of here. And he looked at his guide, and he said, I adjure you by the living God. Get me out of here. Strange God said, You wouldn't you blasphemed his name while you were up on earth, and now you want him to help you. And they screamed, There is no rest in heaven. And finally, he took him out, and he took him back up to earth, and he said, I'll let you go. Last chance. And he said, In a year and a day, we'll meet again.
said he went home, he was absolutely, when he woke up, he was just scared out of his wits. He didn't leave his house for days. He just stayed in the bed and laid there and sweat. And I just said, hey, I can hear it's a year and a day. A year and a day. And he told some of his friends, he said, I had the most awful nightmare. He said, I've been all that shit. They have stupid, you know, they go so places that. I kept it down in my man. He said, I'll never go back to the hell club again. I'm done with it. I'm trying to change my life. Well, that, well as the year went on, he slowly, slid, little by little, slid back into his partying ways. Come up time for the annual meeting. And some of his friends said, you come going to be at the meeting this, this Monday, ain't you? He said, no, I'm not coming, boys. I'm not coming. I'm done with that. Oh, come on, man. You're the life of the party. You're the best one. Come on. And they kept on and on and on. You know how people do He's afraid of them. He's afraid of them. You know how people do. You come on, come on, come on. No, no. You're trying to straighten up and do right. Your friends, have, come on, come on. Go go with. It. Come on, come on. That's what they do, young people. Come on, go with. It. Let's get drunk. Come on, come on. And finally, they talked him into it. And he said every nerve in his body felt like it was being torn out when he walked in that place that night. He said he walked in that place that night, uh, that night like there, and there was all his friends. He'd go, <laughs> hey, and he took a drink and tried to get drunk, and it, it didn't work. And he just sort of laughed, fiendish laugh come out of his mind. He he looked around and it got worse. And he he said the whole he hated it the whole time. He's miserable. And he said what shocked him the most, the president got up and he said, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our annual meeting of the Hell Club. It's leap year, so it's been a year and a day since we've met. He said fear shot through his body. But he sat there. I mean, what are you going to do? He ain't going to jump up and say, I'm, I've got to get saved. I got to get... He's too scared of them people around him. So he sat right there and listened. When that thing was over, son, he got on his horse got out of there. They said, man, he's acting weird. What's wrong? Oh, he had a dream, crazy thing, and all that. And the next morning, they found his horse out grazing in the sunshine out there in the field somewhere with his saddle still on it and everything. And about a hundred yards up the road in the ditch, a stiff body of Archibald. 